Over the past 12 weeks, we have been telling a story about the firefighters of New Haven. Their bravery, skills, and dedication in serving the public is second to none. I'm Captain Ed Flynn. Tonight, Chapter 13 looks at the many faces of the fire service. My guests are Chief John Reardon, Assistant Chief of Administration John Smith, and Assistant Chief of Operations Harold Owens. Good evening, Chiefs. Good evening, Good evening Cap. Chief Reardon, in a sense, the fire service is a semi-military organization. Its chain of command works similar to the military would under battleground conditions. How is the military type discipline maintained and in, in, ingrained into the members of our department? Well, it, it's necessary to have that type of discipline within a department where you could compare the fighting of a fire with, with a battle. Uh, there has to be a sense of discipline in that when orders are issued by company officers or chief officers, they're immediately followed. Uh, many of the people who come into the fire service have, had, uh, have spent time in the service, Marine Corps, Navy, Army, uh, Air Force. Uh, then there are people who come into the department who have not been exposed to that type of a system. Uh, so it starts really with the first day at the training school. Uh, that, that discipline, that orderly way of doing things and uh, under the direction of uh, Deputy Chief uh, Matt Lyons, uh, who was the director of training at the school, uh, Captain Tom Kakase, who was the drill master, and the assistant drill master, Mike Grant, uh, that type of mentality is developed over a seven week period. And hopefully at the end of that time, we, we produce a firefighter who is very proud to wear the uniform of a New Haven firefighter. So that tradition that is instilled in them in the initial process is carried on to the firehouse for the rest of their career. Oh yeah, you can't leave it at the training school. Chief Smith. As the executive officer, you also have the responsibility of being the director of civil service in the city of New Haven. Tell us about the civil defense program in New Haven. Right. The civil defense office uh, in New Haven is located in the Kennedy Mitchell Hall of Records at 200 Orange Street, two levels below street level. Uh, approximately three years ago, the civil defense was transferred to the fire department at that time I was appointed Civil Defense Director. All policies and uh, planning for the Civil Defense are formulated in the Federal Emergency Management Agency, more popularly known as FEMA. Each state has a Civil Defense Director and it filters down to uh, city levels. Our Deputy Chief of Operations, uh, Jim Fleming, a veteran of probably 25 years in civil defense, is the day-to-day -day operations officer at the center. And we have a staff over there of four people. We get very involved in disaster planning, checking our shelters each, each annually, and conducting uh, at least once a year a disaster, which might be an airplane crash, it might be a, a, a hazardous spill, and it takes a lot of planning to bring all different agencies that go to make up this uh, exercise, bring them together, and make sure that they all play, play their uh, important parts in it. The sirens that uh, one would hear on a Saturday morning in the right. city of New Haven. We have 12 of those uh, air raid sirens scattered throughout the city, and at 11 a.m. on a Saturday morning, those are tested simultaneously. So it's deemed appropriate that the fire service would be the place for civil defense, seeing that uh, any major disaster that should occur, it would be the fire service would usually be first down the scene. That was the thinking, that, and that was the reason why it was transferred to the fire department. Chief Owens, one of the major resources at every fire in the city is water. The many miles of water mains throughout the city serve as the artery of our fire hydrant system. Who is responsible for the hydrants? Uh, there are approximately 2,000 hydrants in the city of New Haven, which we in the fire department are responsible to maintain. Uh, New Haven, unlike other cities and towns, owns the hydrants that are in the city. And during the course of the year, especially in the winter months, uh, the fire department personnel are out inspecting these hydrants. When they find something wrong, 
it, they refer to our supervisor of hydrant repairs, Lieutenant Raymond Carboni, at the repair shop, and he in turn sends out special mechanic Ray Lobaz, who is often referred to after a recent newspaper article as uh, the hydrant doctor to make these repairs. Uh, any repairs above ground, Ray is usually able to accomplish this. However, if the hydrants is damaged below the ground, then uh, we get in touch with the water company and they send the crew to dig up the hydrant and Ray then finishes the repairs. What causes uh, some of the problems with the hydrants in the city? Some of the problems that we have uh, with the hydrants are uh, cars running into hydrants. Seems strange, but you can have a pole right next to a hydrant on one side and a tree on the other and they always seem to whack the hydrant and wipe it out. Uh, other problems are uh, old age, uh, wear and tear on the hydrants, and uh, this causes uh, the wear and tear, uh, could possibly cause leaks in the hydrant, which in the winter weather uh, causes freezing. And then we have to send crews out to thaw the hydrants out. Uh, some of the other problems that occur is vandalism. Uh, and there again, uh, we send Ray out to uh, see what he can do with the hydrants. So a, a hydrant that would develop a, a leak either internally or externally uh, has to be tended to because of the freezing weather, which would right. cause additional damage. In the time, yeah. What would a person do if they saw a hydrant that was damaged? What should they do? They should immediately call it into the fire department because you never know when you're going to need a hydrant. You never know when it's going to be a fire in that area where the hydrant is and that it would have to be used. Uh, right now, they're cleaning and relining all the time the water company in New Haven around the city to make sure that the mains are clean. Uh, this is an ongoing process. Chief Reardon, the demands of administ administering a $13 million budget is an awesome one. Uh, how are you able to address all the local needs, all the state needs, uh, attending meetings around the state, uh, addressing the uh, inquiries from around the country on the successes of the various programs in New Haven? How can you do all that and still run a fire department? Well, you don't do all that. If one person had to handle uh, the long list that you just mentioned, that there wouldn't be enough hours in a day to deal with it. Uh, the day-to-day -day administration of the department uh, policy, et cetera, is handled uh, uh, by myself, by Chief Smith, and by Chief Owens. Uh, but then there are the budgetary considerations, the uh, maintenance of records, and we're very fortunate in the department to have two women who work in the Chief's office. Uh, Jean Fluger is the Secretary of the Fire Board. She's also an administrative aide to the Chief's office. She handles the budgetary uh, uh, problems of the department. Uh, letting us know at a moment's notice where we have balances when we have to do something, make a purchase or something like that. Uh, Karen Otis is uh, uh, a, the person who deals with maintaining our personnel records, our sick leave, uh, our injury records. Uh, these two women uh, just do an incredible amount of work and uh, they're, not, they're not nine to five women. Uh, they perform a function. Jean also maintains the pension rolls for the firemen's uh, relief fund, the pension fund, uh, uh, they're, they're very busy and they're an integral part of the administration of the department. Chief Smith, uh, recently you had the occasion to celebrate your 40th year of service with the fire department and that in, in itself is quite an accomplishment for any individual. You have seen a lot of changes take place over, over four decades. One of the changes that took place during the 1940s was when the department change the color of their apparatus from red to white. Could you tell us why this change took place? Of course, everyone knows the traditional color of fire apparatus is red. However, early on in the 40s, our country got involved in the war. Certainly all cities were part of the blackout. And about that time, a new chief was appointed to the department, a chief by the name of Paul P. Hines. It was his thinking or his idea that if the apparatus was uh, white in color, it'd be more visible at night. So he started a program of changing all our apparatus to white. And it's a funny thing, to this day, we get visitors uh, from time to time come into the city. One of the questions they would ask is going through the firehouses, how come the apparatus is white? And we proceed to tell them the story when it started. 
ama an amazing part is it seems that the department back in the 40s might have been 40 years ahead of the times because uh, recent studies have shown that the color of red is not the best color to to show at night. As a matter of fact, it shows in, in a dark, dark manner. Another color they're using in some cities now is a lime green. The lime green. Who is responsible for keeping the apparatus in action-ready condition? <laughs> We're very fortunate in New Haven. We have a beautiful facility on the boulevard, a new facility in the last few years. And not only is our academy located there, but also our repair shop. And under the supervision of our supervisor of motor apparatus, Robert Dower, a very capable man. He's been supervisor for at least 20 years. He has two able assistants and uh, Leonard Whiting and Robert Ryan and it's certainly not uncommon to go into that shop on any given day to possibly see a 100 foot area ladder, 1,000 gallon pumper or one of the many vehicles up in the air and they're making major repairs on them. They do a super job day in and day out. Chief Owens, there are 10 <coughs> fire stations in the city and, and a new fire training academy. It appears that the department has an awful lot of real estate to be maintained. Uh, how do we keep these buildings from deteriorating? Uh, we have our own maintenance department and it's under the supervision of uh, Lieutenant Ralph Pecorello. And he's assisted by two special mechanics, uh, Joe Catella and Angelo Ricciatelli. And, uh, these men are very versatile and are able to do almost any kind of uh, electrical, plumbing, uh, carpentry work, things of that nature. They are also uh, take care of the heating in all these buildings and, uh, and the air conditioning. Uh, they take care of roofs, they do everything. Uh, they're excellent people and they, they paint. It's unbelievable the things that they accomplish. Uh, and they also have other jobs, such as in the, the recent floodings that we've had, uh, one of their major jobs is to take department pumps around to different businesses and to homes to uh, pump these places out. They make a major contribution. Chief Reardon, uh, one of the goals of the fire department is to prevent the incident of, of fire. The Office of the Fire Marshal, headed by Fire Marshal Thomas Lydon, is responsible for the enforcement of the State Fire Safety Code. What kind of impact does this have in reducing fires? Well, I, I think an effective fire department probably starts with a good fire prevention program. And uh, the fire incidents in the city of New Haven uh, in 1982 were 13% less than they were in 1981. So it's, I think it, 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 that reduction attests to the fact that we are doing a good job uh, in code enforcement. Uh, the Office of the Fire Marshal under the uh, direction of Marshal Leiden do an excellent job. Uh, he's assisted by Robert Kenny, who is a Deputy Fire Marshal, and also the Life Safety Compliance Officer, uh, Jim Lee. Uh, we also have a Public Assembly Inspector, Mike Long, who uh, during the evening hours, uh, late evening hours, will inspect uh, places of public assembly to see that the fire code is observed. And that's very important to us to see that means of egress are free and that overcrowding isn't permitted uh, uh, in the places that hold these various activities. Uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, enforcement of the fire code, the complaints that come into the marshal's office are handled by uh, uh, inspectors in our department, uh, Tom Darney and Lenny Borelli, Nelson Casillas, uh, uh, John Keefe, and Ralph Capasso. And they generally handle the day-to-day -day enforcement of the fire code. How does a fire marshal handle all the technical administrative work and in, in, in the fire statistics? Well, as we discussed before, with the overall administrative administration of the department, I don't think it's possible for one person to do that. Uh, Marshal Leiden uh, is assisted uh, uh, with an administrative aide, Susan Evans, who is responsible f uh, for maintaining those records. Uh, she, she, when you think of the 26,000 buildings that are in the city of New Haven and the responsibility for keeping tabs on all of those, uh, that is a, a large responsibility. But it's done by all the people in the office. How about the computer? Well, we're very proud of our computer system. Uh, uh, we put literally, I think, millions of bits of information into that system each year. Uh, we have a data control officer, uh, David McDonald, who is responsible for the day-to-day -day functioning of the data system. Uh, he's assisted by Denise uh, D'Amato, who uh, handles the entry into the system. 
Uh, we have people come into New Haven from all over the United States to examine our systems, fire incident file, our arson file, our arson warning and prevention system, and hopefully uh, in the near future we'll be in the uh, microcomputer business also. During the past year, the department received a very prestigious award uh, from the Urban and Regional Information Systems Association. Exemplary Systems in Government Award was presented to the City of New Haven for its Arson Information Management System in 1982. It was given to the department for extraordinary achievement in the use of automated information systems for improved services and increased benefits to the city. I, I think that the, the mayor of the City of New Haven and its citizens, sh citizens should be most proud of what has been accomplished. We'll be right back, right after this short message. You know, once upon a time, I didn't know what I was trying to find. I was looking around for something new. You'll never guess what I found at the YW. We're a women's team to help you take charge in the face of the problems that have gotten too hard. Parties and family gatherings often include alcoholic beverages. If young children are present, take extra care because only a small amount of alcohol could be life-threatening, as little as a few tablespoons. Children who've gotten too much alcohol often simply pass out, making it difficult to tell if they're just sleeping or dying. Keep that kind of cheer away from children and keep your parties really cheerful. It's just good health. We're back with Chief Reardon, Assistant Chief John Smith, and Assistant Chief Harold Owens, and we're talking about the many faces of the fire service. Chief Smith, many of the traditions of the past have been lost in the wheels of progress. In the 1940s and 1950s, the Dalmatian dog was a, a scene that you saw every day around the firehouse life. Tell us about that era and how it ended. Well, a little while ago I mentioned uh, the then, the then uh, chief of the department, Paul Hines, often described as that flamboyant Chief Hines. And that was another one of his ideas, to have these Dalmatian dogs ride the apparatus. Many, many of the, of the companies, probably all of them at one time or another, had a Dalmatian dog. And it wasn't uncommon to see them sitting between the officer and the driver with their front feet up on the dashboard racing towards the scene of a fire. And these dogs, as I can remember, all had fire names, Buff, Bell, Sparky, names like that. I just can't seem to remember the, any other ones. But as the years passed on, they got old and, and they passed away. The last one, as I remember, to ride the apparatus was uh, one they called Buff, and it rode with engine Company 10 over at uh, Lombard and Poplar. And I can remember well the day that we had a fourth alarm, four alarm of fire on uh, the Franklin Street fire was early in 57. And in responding to that, the dog slid off the apparatus and was run over. And I guess you might say that was the end of an era of the fire or Dalmatian dogs. However, the chief of the department at the present time is the proud owner, or I might say his wife is, of a Dalmatian dog. So it's possible that if... Uh, we might still have another batch and come along and start that up again. It might not be a bad idea. Not, not. Chief Owens, as the, the operations uh, officer, you are normally the uh, first top echelon chief at all major fires. Uh, what's your role when you arrive on the scene? Well, when I first arrive, I confer with the deputy chief and the battalion chief who are already at the scene, uh, size up what's going on at the fire. And one of the first things we look for is there any life involved. If there is life uh, involved, uh, all attempts are concentrated on attempting to make a rescue of the people that are involved. Uh, then we have uh, the extension of the fire to other buildings. We have to uh, cover that, uh, make sure we have an ample water supply, uh, problems of injuries to firemen at the scene, uh, which could be uh, Bad. If uh, it's a bad fire, we've uh, often had the firemen uh, get hurt and send them, we have to send them from the scene to the hospital. Uh, 
Also, uh, we have problems of salvage. And uh, now with uh, some of the chemicals that are burning today, we have to worry about evacuating the neighborhoods. Uh, what's burning, in other words, is it toxic? Uh, the, are the chemicals there, are they dangerous to the people in the surrounding neighborhood? Uh, How about the cause and orig origin? Who would handle the cause and origin at the fire? Uh, the investigative unit uh, with the fire marshal. Uh, multiple armed fires, they are always at the scene. Chief Reardon, uh, what happens if a major fire should occur in the city of New Haven or a series of fire, uh, fires occur and the city is st stripped of its uh, fire defenses? What does the department do? Well, a department should be capable of handling two major fires uh, uh, that would occur simultaneously. We have a mobilization plan in the department uh, that calls for the orderly recall and assignment of off-duty firefighters. Uh, also, <clears throat> within the department, we have two spare area ladder units, and we have three spare pumps. If that were not enough to, to, to handle a serious fire problem within the city of New Haven, uh, we could immediately talk to neighboring towns and ask for them to cover in with us to handle the situation. But I'm very confident that uh, we can handle the situation in New Haven with our department. So actually our, our citizens can feel safe that if they know there's a major fire uh, roaring in some part of the city that uh, they are also protected, that there are transfers of equipment moving from station to station? You, you don't have to worry if, if you're in the city of New Haven, if there's a fire in one part of the city, a major fire, whether you are not going to have protection on the other side. We have provided for that already. Chief Smith, over the years there have been many major fires. The fire department has had many promotional ceremonies. It is always a thrill for a young recruit to graduate from rookie school. <coughs> How does the fire department uh, capture these once-in-a-lifetime memories? Well, I think everyone knows that the fire department is made up of many talented and skilled uh, people. Uh, probably one of our more talented is our Deputy Chief Al Bysowitz, who is not only captain of our golf team, but is also our chief photographer. And it's not uncommon at any given time of the day or night to see him at the scene of fires taking action photos. And I might add that on more than one occasion, Al has been awarded top prizes in competition with other photographers uh, throughout the country. And we're also lucky, I suppose you might say, that to have a young firefighter on a job by the name of Jim Moss, who has also taken some uh, pictures of major fires and certainly when it comes time for a successor to Al I'm sure he'll be able to step right in. I believe it's appropriate to mention that the uh, Fire Training Academy has its own photo lab down there and we're our, well equipped and much use is made of it. And that would mean that the the traditions and the history of the fire service will be resaved because of the, the picture taking. There's no doubt in my mind. Chief Owens, uh, uh, who determines when the arson squad is called into a fire? Uh, last year in the city of New Haven, we had 145 structural fires that were either suspicious or incendiary in origin, I mean in nature. And uh, the arson squad or the investigative unit uh, investigates all structural fires as to cause and origin. Uh, they are working during the regular work week. They respond to all uh, Signal 73s, which to us is a working fire. and. Uh, after working hours, they are on call, and they can be called in by the deputy chief or the battalion chief who is on duty. Chief Reard, last year, for the first time since 1973, the fire losses in the city of New Haven were under $3 million. Uh, what's responsible for this? Well, actually, Eddie, last year was the second consecutive year that the fire loss was less than uh, $3 million. And that's the first time, I think, since 1972 in 10 years. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, uh, the fire department uh, can no, no longer enjoy the luxury of being a reactive force, just reacting to fires. We have to be a proactive force and, and be doing things before the fire goes down. Uh, for the past three years, uh, Lieutenant Donald Wilson has been the director of, uh, of public safety as far as the department is concerned. He is out daily in the schools, uh, in high-rise uh, buildings, uh, senior citizens, uh, attempting to educate 
uh, all of those uh, people, that cross-section of people, in how to prevent a fire. And then if there is a fire, if there is a failure, then what do you do to exit a building or exit an apartment or whatever in case of fire? When you tie all of those things in, the fire safety education, uh, code enforcement, uh, our work with the block watch associations, etc. You put them all together, I think that's what, uh, those are the reasons for the reduction in fire incidents and fire loss in the city of New Haven. Chief Smith, what can the citizens of New Haven do to help the fire department? <clears throat> well, we would certainly hope that they would follow the good uh, fire safety practices and also to, uh, and of course, it's the new number, 911, to report an emergency. And if you occasionally arose where you had to call 911 to report a fire, we would hope that people would speak clearly, give the address, the name of the street, the nearest cross street. Now, that's quite important because there are many streets in, in New Haven or any other city, I would say, that sound similar in name. Also, we have some, and not too many of them in New Haven, we have like a first street and a first avenue by giving the nearest cross streets, it makes it easy for the operator to plug in uh, the response to, to that alarm. And also, uh, as Chief Owens mentioned before, we have nearly 2,000 hydrants in New Haven. And many, many of these hydrants are located in front of your house or my house. And we would hope people that have a hydrant in front would be a little careful with it. In other words, if there's any weeds or anything growing around it, to not be afraid when they're cutting the grass to trim it. And especially in the winter time, when the snow falls and you're shoveling the sidewalks, don't be afraid to take a few extra shovels and keep the hydrant clean. Certainly, if not your house, it might be one of your neighbors where that hydrant's gonna be needed. Don't park in front of it either, right, Don't park in front of it, yeah, that's very... Our time is running short now. I wanna thank uh, Chief Reardon. Assistant Chief Smith, Assistant Chief Owens, and I want to give Star Cable TV a special thank you. Over the past 13 weeks, we have been giving you 13 different types of shows on the many faces of the fire service, to the firefighters, to our communications, our EMS people, our heroes, education, and smoke detectors. And without the cooperation and assistance of Star Cable TV, our message could not have reached as many people as it has. Thank you, and good night. of cable television service is illegal. Tampering with telecommunication signals is a federal offense. Violators will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law.